Um, Good. Yep, okay. we might want to repeat that motion, Trustee Grimbles. Okay. Um, Made a motion uh, to return uh, the meeting to board of second by Trustee Rivers, and um, we returned back to session after a five minute recess and had a, a few moments there of getting our um, YouTube back online. In the interest of time, uh, I'm going to the next uh, item up for business tonight's agenda changes. Uh, I know we have some folks here to speak about the Lewis Center Trail Road, but we also have. Um, the health uh, department here today to give a public health update. So I would invite them to come forward and go ahead and give their update and we'll revert back to the agenda changes and public comments that aren't on the agenda right after. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Sheila Huddleston, your health commissioner. It's been a little while, hasn't it? I was thinking about as I was listening to all of your uh, your community about relationships. And certainly nothing has been more important to the health district than the relationships that we have with our partners during the last 16 months. Um, I think Matt Noble, Chief Noble, was actually one of the very first calls I got when COVID first hit Delaware County, and he's texting me. And I think now probably almost every chief, I don't know if your new one does, has my cell phone and I get texts all the time. <coughs> Luckily, those have started to decrease. So um, just because I don't believe that I've been here before and met Miss Bonnie, and I'm not even sure, Mr. Grumbles, if I was, you were elected before we stopped coming to all of these meetings. So um, we have this partnership with all of our political subdivisions because I believe that it's that important that not only do you all know what we do as a health district, but what can we do to help you? Because I truly do believe that we're partners. And in Delaware County, we have 26. So I used to try to get to every single one three times a year, but you can imagine that became quite challenging at times. And I, my husband does like it if I'm some of the time, although after 40 years, sometimes I don't think he cares if I'm home. Um, but we did about three years ago have one of our staff people become a partner to each of our political subdivisions. And you all know Ms. Katie. Jen is our director of community health, and she's your partner and has been here very regularly. Our goal is obvious, always to have her be here at least to seven or eight meetings, and then I will continue to try to come to at least two of them. Um, so that's kind of how this all came about. So I will just give you a very brief um, little bit. I've already talked a little while, but we'll give you just a couple of things. So obviously COVID is on everyone's mind. Um, continues to be, you've been watching in the news that um, the Delta variant is on the rise in Ohio. I think we have to all take that with a little grain of salt because our numbers are still very far off below what they were, you know, a few months ago. And we have seen a little bit of an increase in Delaware County a couple of weeks ago. We were down to only having 45 persons that we had placed into isolation um, in the last 10 days. And as of today, we're up to 59. So not huge numbers, but we are seeing a little bit of an increase. We were down to one case per per day per 100,000 population. And as of today, we're up to three again. Not huge numbers. If you think about a county with 200,000 people, six cases a day, not huge numbers. But it is a little concerning that we were starting to always see drops in our weekly reports, and now we're starting to see some little increases. So the Delta variant is here in Ohio. What we do know is that the mRNA vaccines do seem to be working against those. The Johnson & Johnson, a little bit less. However, at this time, there is no recommendation for anyone who's had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to get that repeated. So we'll continue to monitor that because we have given some Johnson & Johnson. Mostly what we've given is Moderna and then Pfizer, of course, to the younger children. And then a little bit of the Johnson & Johnson, which some people really like because it's just one shot as opposed to two. But we are continuing to vaccinate, although our numbers are very, very low. Um, overall, we've given, I think, almost 28,000 vaccines, but most of those were all prior to, I would say, in May is when we started to really see that drop. And last week, we only gave 12 vaccinations. So at our peak, we gave about 5,000 in one day when we did all of our school districts. So to go down to 12, we're like, hmm. But we continue to offer them. 
we will now open up a vial even if it's just for one person. In the beginning, we were very, very careful. And in fact, Jen was our person who had to call to make sure that we had somebody to take every single dose of every single open vial. And sometimes she would spend three hours trying to get that done. But at this point, anybody that's vaccinated is a plus for our community. So overall in Delaware County, we're sitting at about 62%. You've probably heard for the highest in the state. I get asked that question all the time. What's Delaware County doing? It's not us as a health district. It truly is our community and the partners that we have. Um, we are just now getting back to all of our staff being back at their regular posts as of July the 12th. We're still, of course, continuing all of our communicable disease efforts related to COVID, but the majority of our staff have returned to regular duties. And so it's kind of an interesting place to be because for almost 16 months, we just really didn't do hardly anything except uh, COVID and then, of course, any emergency type or high priority things that came up. So as you all are working and doing all of the things that you're doing, if there's something you need from the health district, don't hesitate to call. I know Trustee Rivers and I worked a lot last year on swimming pools, and thankfully we didn't have to do that this year. Um, so we'll continue to do those things, but as things come up, please don't hesitate to reach out. You all know Jen. You can certainly reach me. You know, our goal here is to make sure that we're meeting the needs that you all have from a public health standpoint. So everybody should be kind of back to their regular duties. So if there's anything that's going on in the township that we can work on with you, please make sure you let me know. Thank you for coming. Yes. For Delaware County vaccinations compared to other counties in Ohio. We are number one in the state. So we're sitting at about 62% overall. If you look at just our 20 and above, we're actually over 70%. There is a very strong belief that herd immunity gets to, if you get that 70% of vaccinated persons that you'll get to that. So in our 20 and over, we're doing really, really well. Um, you know, when we when they look at the total county, they look at that 12 and over, and you know, we haven't been vaccinating that younger population for very long yet. Um, we will be doing um, COVID vaccinations with our back to school shots. We always work with all the school districts to do some back to school immunizations for those regular vaccines. So we will have those available to parents that are interested. But overall, we're doing really well. We like to be number one in the state, even if it isn't just us. One of my good friends is the health commissioner in Warren County, and they are um, number one, but only in the Southwest District. We're number one in the state. <laughs> Is there anything that you all are working on currently that we could assist with or work on with you? Yeah. All right. Well, if anything comes up, please don't hesitate to reach out. I will see you in a few months, and Jen's going to hang around for a little bit longer. And if there is anything, really, we really truly do believe in our partnerships. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All right. Uh, agenda changes. Trustee Rivers, anything? Do not have any. Yeah, I do. Uh, I uh, need to scratch the new certificate of, res uh, of resources. I don't have that at the back yet, so now we'll just push to the next meeting. I don't know, it may already have gotten removed from the agenda on Friday. So. Okay, and then um, with no agenda changes, I think the next uh, order of business is public comments for. Items not otherwise on the agenda. I know there's some folks here to speak about the trail on Lewis and the Road. You can come forward and state your name and address, please. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy with, with the residents who want to speak about the trail. I have no issue with that. But just for future reference, our resolution is for public comment for items only on the agenda. So I just. I think they moved that to have uh, not otherwise on the agenda, if I'm not mistaken. That that decision was made intent aware they were aware of that but that's i well so just something for future reference i can look at for the next week the resolution that was passed yeah it says it's for pertinent items only on the agenda so just something to for us to look at for next week but for tonight i'm happy to make that speak again I, I planned on opening it up for this conversation based on the emails anyway i think uh mr bowers was prepared to um yeah and like for tonight i'm happy just future reference something Please, sir. Okay, Go cool. Ahead. Good evening. My name is Bud Abraham. I live at 6205 Stormhaven Court in the Shores subdivision. Um, I'm here to talk about the uh, uh, Lewis Center Trail that has been constructed. First, I want to thank you for getting that constructed. It makes my my post or end of bike ride uh, 
finish a lot more pleasurable than having to kind of mer use the shoulder that's on Moose Center from the bottom of the Bell Canyon uh, traffic circle uh, to, to the entrance of my subdivision. Um, I rode up and down the uh, that hill 389 times last year as part of my Pelotonia challenge. Um, so anyway, I want to thank you for that. Uh, I do have a question because this past Sunday, I noticed that there is a lot of gravel that's getting washed out from the new uh, Lewis Center nursery uh, driveway. And I'm not sure who I should contact about getting that cleaned up. Is it the, the business owner's responsibility or is it the township's responsibility? So it just as a question, um, just, you know, I, you don't have to answer now. I just, it's just a question. But the reason I'm here is the planned continuation of the trail and some of the concerns that I've seen on social media, but I have my own concern or, or own comment and or comments. One is uh, a couple weeks ago, apparently there was some kind of informal discussion with Ms. Taranto and some other members of the township with residents of the community. And that discussion was not announced, was not promoted or anything. I would have loved to have attended as one that uses Lewis Center Road and have used the trail enormously uh, over the past few years since they've gotten developed. So I would have been more than happy to participate, but just in social media, I found out after the fact. Um, so that would have been nice to know what that discussion was about. <clears throat> but my concern is the safety issue, and we were talking about safety with the previous discussion, is on the continuation of this proposed path. Now, part of the my concern is I haven't really seen any plan of what the continuation looks like. But someone that has ridden, that rode up that path 389 times last summer, um, to continue it on from what I understand and what I've read through social media, right and wrong, is that the path will continue on the west side of Lewis Center Road and then cross over at the main entrance of the state park. There's a lot of con safety concerns on my viewpoint that that's really not a great place to drop that. It should uh, continue just past Waukegan, stop and cross over into the main Army Corps of Engineers Visitor Center driveway. That's where the crossover should be. There's a lot of room on uh, visibility in both directions where if you continue it down around that curve, it's blind and there's also a, a little grade and when you go up there. And I don't know if anyone has been out on that road during prime time, i.e. during the week days from say 4.30 to 6.30 or on the weekends. This time of the year, you know, I, I'm lucky I ride out early. I'm usually home by 10.30 in the morning on my bike rides. Any later, and I, you, you, you want to talk about nervous? I'm the picture boy, I'm the poster boy. So I just want to, you know, as a point that that's got a little concerning to me to bring that entrance out to the main entrance of the state park. Uh, the other thing is that uh, stretch of road is 55 miles an hour. It'd be pretty tough for someone to come around that corner from going from west to east around that corner and having to, you know, some kind of blinker allowing showing that people are crossing. I think that would be very hazardous. Um, again, comment. Has anyone gone out there and actually you know, stood out there and watched traffic during those prime times of usage. Um, the other thing is just the, the visibility or the communication, the transparency of the residents that live in those two subdivisions. One's the shores and the other one is park shores. I think, you know, through social media, a lot of us would like to be able to contribute or at least be able to uh, bring out our point of view about the continuation of the path. There's a lot of us that would use it and are already are using it immensely. You should go out there and walk on the weekends and see how many around the weekdays and see the usage of that path. It's, it's tremendous. I'm, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. Um, so anyway, that's my con you know couple concerns and I'm gonna offer my service as a cyclist and as a resident 
to to the board or to the to the parks committee or whatever to be a consultant or at least ask for my advice because I think this is a great thing to have. It's just we'd like to know more about what's going on. And again, I'm open to uh, provide some volunteer service. So, um, and then one more point on a trail that runs back along the railroad tracks here. Um, a lot of the residents in the shores, they asked me, how do I get over there? There's no signage, you know, or, or even like a marker, you know, stenciled onto the, onto the roadway. How do I get over to this trail? How do I get over and, you know, go along here? There's nothing. So I think I'll, there was, and I can only speak for the one that crosses over at Park Lawn. I can't speak for the other entrances that cross over. But I mean, I certainly a lot of our, my neighbors would be open to knowing where how to get to that trail. So that's all I have, and thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Hi, I'm Larry Cross, and I'm a resident of the uh, Park Shore uh, neighborhood. Um, well, first of all, too, I'd like to offer, as a taxpayer, you can spend some of our money on a sound system. <laughs> this is a fabulous uh, facility, and it's been a nice meeting today, and I appreciate that. Really? But it's extremely difficult to hear like some good, valuable I think we just met today to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I agree very much with uh, the comments that have just been made. Uh, I would like to see Orange Township table uh, the continuation of the path until you present to us, the residents that live there, what the plan is going to be going forward. As we understand it right now, uh, the plan is to continue from Waukegan Avenue on the neighborhood side of the road all the way to the entrance to the beach. As he stated, I'll second that. That's just a recipe for disaster. Um, the, the beach has become increasingly popular, which is a good thing. Um, the traffic in our area has increased tremendously over the last couple of years. In the summertime, with all the activities at, at the beach, it's very difficult to get in and out of the subdivisions right now. Those three entrances, um, when you, when you, also even entering the subdivision, there are no turn lanes. So you're coming down and they've increased the speed limit to 55 mile an hour on that stretch. And as you're coming down the road, you try to enter your subdivision, people are breathing down your behind. And if you couple that with you're trying to get into the subdivision, now you have a conflict with bike and pedestrian traffic, it's a dangerous situation. Um, what we would like to see in Park Shore is the, the crossing of the path. And by the way, very supportive of the bike path. My grandkids have already used it. It's great. But uh, we would like to see uh, the crossing over to the park side south of Waukegan. Uh, we've talked to uh, the Corps of Engineers, we talked to Silas before, but we talked with the Corps of Engineers as well, and they're very supportive of allowing that path to go through the visitor centers and through the state park. That would provide a path that is a lot more attractive as a path through a forest and parklands instead of along the side of a highway. Um, and it, it helps with the traffic situation where you're trying to exit your neighborhood and you conflict with the bike traffic. And I, I heard you loud and clear about the nerves of, of you know, biking uh, on that thing. And it's so much better today for the bikers. I'm personally not a biker, but in the past, they've tried to go along the berm of that, of that highway. And it's, <laughs> Auto traffic, it's, it's just unbelievable how many people will come to someone riding a bicycle and pay no attention to the oncoming traffic and pull around that biker. It's a danger to the bikers and a danger to the, to the auto traffic. So the current path is there as a huge improvement. Um, but 
crossing the intersections of the three entrances, two for the shores and one for park shores, creates a, a much more dangerous situation. Um, so we, we would like you to consider that and to feed back to us before any more action is taken, what the plan is going to be. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bowers, do you have any comments on that? I know you uh, sent several emails about it or just bothering if either one of you want to speak to that quickly here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, there's been little to no movement on the project since the initial meeting a month-ish or so back. Um, at the meeting, I guess to kind of fill you in a little bit, that was uh, generated by uh, a lot of the homeowners uh, in the area there too. It was probably 25, 30 of them that kind of uh, put the meeting together. Uh, right now, the design work is still being done. It's in the hands of the consulting engineer. Uh, the uh, county uh, Township, as well as the Army Corps of Engineers and some other entities, have a meeting coming up to discuss uh, some more of the details that are going to go into that. Uh, there's a lot of work still being done on uh, tree surveys, drainage work, right of way surveys. Uh, I believe the majority of the right of way stuff is just about wrapped up, so we should have those details here soon. Uh, but there will be, at some point, some designs and some drawings actually formalized and shown. Uh, I haven't seen them yet. Uh, as we discussed during the meeting a month or so ago, uh, when bike paths are in vision, a lot of times it is, I don't want to say make-believe, but it is just a vision. It is a drawing a line on a piece of paper. Um, the county and the safety aspects will go into, there will be a lot of decisions that go into that and a lot of their criteria. Uh, it is a county road we're crossing on federal land uh, with the township bike path. So there's a lot of different working pieces that are going to go into play there. I understand there's a lot of concerns with it. Uh, we'll know more once we actually see the engineer drawings and designs and that they're able to uh, dissect some of the issues that they're finding while they're out there doing the survey work. I have one more. <laughs> I have one more comment, and that is um, we've all ended up with the pristine causeway that goes between our neighborhoods and the parklands. The, the trees on both of the line, both sides of the road, beautiful animals in the park and to our neighborhoods. And we'd love to see that not disturbed. Um, and by crossing at Waukegan and going over into the park lands, that would be avoided uh, in favor of the park and the neighborhoods. One of the things I'll add to, to the discussion, just for food for thought, as Mr. Grimmels did uh, when talking about zoning, is uh, the, initial, the initial review of trees, just specific to trees and the continuation of the path is the amount of trees that would be lost by switching over, crossing over to the east side would be substantially more uh, the sooner you cross over. The other component that has to go into consideration is the long-term plans of the path. I think there are 12, maybe 14 phases of this path that are envisioned right now to eventually get the path all the way to South Old State. Uh, there are some future issues that we'll run into with other phases, crossing uh, pond on the east side of the road uh, and some wetlands on the south side of the road as well as uh, a uh, protected archaeological site as well. So where and how and the design of how that crosses, there'll be a lot of other factors that are future phases of the path that will go into consideration once that's all decided. But, but the summary, I think the summary statement though, if, if I may, is that the recommendations were shared with the proper entities and there's going to be a meeting to discuss and look at options. So it's, it's not lost on the board or the department heads that are driving dur during the day-to-day -day work. Um, there, there will be a touch base to look at the feasibility of what you propose, both propose. And so um, I think once that, that meeting happens, uh, we'll know more about the options and then we can work on communicating to the community on what the findings were and, and reconnect. Before, before the dirt's moved, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> and as a project manager, is there a general timeline when this, you know, is it like Three weeks, three months. When's, three the, months? when's the meeting taking place? Uh, it's uh, Wednesday, it's Wednesday morning. This week? This week, yes. This week, yeah. So, so once that happens, the engineers will go back and come up with a proposed timeline. Okay. I, again, I, you know, keep us posted in um, volunteering my, my service, my time to you know, provide input. 
and as a former member or president of the, the Shores HOA, you know, I think it would be prudent to keep the HOAs involved. So what's going on is the Shores two entrances, we put a bunch of money into those two entrances to update, update lighting and landscaping. Okay. So there's a bunch of money that we put in there. Well, I, I think I think Silas, I, I believe you and uh, Miss Bonnie have uh, contact information. So I, I assume that once this starts, you'll coordinate back with the people you met with. Correct. Right. There's a uh, kind of two residents uh, in those neighborhoods that have kind of taken on the lion's share of handling the, the bulk of communication for those groups. I think our email list is maybe 15 or 20 or so. But I think the group they have developed and that we've talked before uh, has grown a little bit larger than that. So we'll communicate through those HOAs as well. Our so why don't, if you'd like to email Silas uh, Bowers, um, his email's on the website, it's sbowers at orangetwp.org, and he can add you to that communication, okay? Thank you both. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we have two items on the, for the consent agenda, a few items rather, for the consent agenda this evening. Are there any um, concerns with items on the consent agenda? Any updates or comments you'd like to make about the consent agenda? That's correct. I saw the two um, blanket, one for using CARES funds and one for using admin funds, but ultimately for the same type of work. Is that correct? Right. We know we can use the CARES funds for walls, <laughs> separating people. So, and we'll get legal opinion hopefully on exactly what else we can use the, the CARES for. Wow funds for in our renovation efforts. Okay. Make a motion to approve resolution 221-225 and 21-226 of the consent agenda. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. I should note just for, um, uh, just to clarify, I did email the prosecutor and I sent the response to both you, uh, Mr. Grumbles and Mr. Rivers. Um, that I do not have to, um, after calling roll with a trustee that's absent, I don't have to call their name during all the other votes. But I am noting them as absent in the um, journal. Thank you. All right. Brings us to our development and zoning report. Spawn. Thank you. Um, Yes, so the zoning report. Um, so this evening uh, we did hear uh, two overlay applications. The first was for Orange Summit Communities, it continued to August 2nd at 6 p.m. And the second was the Sheets hearing, uh, which was continued to August 16th at 6 p.m. Um, following that, Um, for the Board of Zoning Appeals for Thursday, August 19th, uh, we do have an area variance request for an in-ground swimming pool. Uh, that was a continued hearing from last month as the applicant was not able to be there. Um, there's a second application um, for uh, also, or, sorry, for an area variance uh, in regards to the deck in, for the Meadows of the Center. And lastly, uh, what will be the upcoming item on the agenda uh, is we can see the new uh, Development plan amendment application zone 21 04 for Evans Farm um, single family plan residential district that will be need, need to be scheduled by the Board of Trustees. Is there a proposed date for that? Um, they are proposing to do it on August 2nd, so the following meeting. So that would put Orange Summit and Evans Farm for that, e that hearing. Are you okay with that? I am okay with that. What's the subject matter for the people watching for the Evans Farm request? Yeah. Yes, so this is uh, an, a minor amendment to the Evans Farm single family plan residential district. This is in regards to um, reducing the rear yard setback and side yard or, oh, setbacks um, in general for in-ground swimming pools facing public right away. Um, because of this, the lot sizes of Evans Farm, it's almost impossible to squeeze a pool in given our standards as our standards are 25 feet from any, any public street and there's 40 foot lots. so. It just makes it a little more difficult, but that that's the only thing that's involved with this amendment at this time. Any other concerns with the August 2nd? Make a motion to approve resolution 21-227, schedule the hearing for 
Zoning Application 21-04 Evans Farm Development to August 2nd. Second. Mr. Rumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. All right. Ms. Bonnie, you want to talk about Highland Hills? Yes, uh, and I'm going to have Jeff Beard, our Senior Zoning Officer, touch on the last two items. Um, so, Jeff, if you want to give an overview of the Highland Hills yep. variance. Yep. Um, um, we received a residential application for a deck located at 5796 Highland Hills Drive. Um, while we reviewed it, we noticed that it was set back 12 feet from the property line. Um, looking at it, our standards are 12 and a half feet from the property line, uh, but this is a location that is split down the property uh, with Genoa Township. Um, in doing some investigation uh, work, we found out that Genoa Township approved the application, the original house um, building permit and application, and their setbacks are at 10 feet. Um, the house is currently set at 10 feet. 10.7 feet, uh, so the house is not in compliance with our uh, standards, and then the deck would not be. Um, speaking with legal counsel, we were determined that the yellow line is the, the township border, uh, the maroon line is the tax district. Um, Delaware County decided to pick uh, which township got the taxes on different properties. Um, based on legal counsel, since it is in Orange Township Tax District, it must follow our rules, our, our regulations. Since it's at 10 feet, 10.7 feet from the property line, it's not in compliance. Uh, legal counsel suggested that we have them go through a variance process to get it to come into compliance. Um, that way, if they sell the house, they won't have any legal issues moving down the road. Um, and based on that, since this really isn't the property owner that's changed hands three or four different times, um, it's not their doing for placing a house at this location. Uh, we were we were coming in front of the board to see if the trustees would approve waiving the variance fee of $600 for this uh, site. And if it is waived, they will be on the next BCA hearing in August. Okay. Yeah, I have no problem with that. I don't think it's a fault of the property owner that they were caught in that. Political, I guess, mm -hmm. issue of this nature. Yeah, it's a pretty unique situation. I have that problem. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve resolution 21 228, accepting to waive the variance fee on 5796 Highland Hills Drive. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. I would add to for note that I uh, spoke with Ms. Bonnie about. Um, other zoning applications related to uh, right away acquisition or growth and expansion projects it came up with a, a church. There's other examples where signs are removed for road expansion or road work, and in order to put the same exact sign back up, the the, the rules uh, as they stand state that the uh, landowner must uh, reapply and pay fees and so forth. And I just think that's inefficient. Um, if they're moving it to a similar location relative to the prior, uh, the way it's arranged on the road, same sign, it's already been approved, um, that we could avoid um, everything associated with the signage from right-of-way acquisition all the way through reapproval by, by building that into our code uh, on the front end. So they're going to take a look at that as part of their ongoing efforts. Holderman? Yep. Uh, the last one is for Holderman Street, uh, the last trustee meeting that was continued to this uh, hearing for further discussion from the trustees on how to move forward. Um, if we consider the current uh, structure as, as, as a structure, and if we should pr proceed with more violation towards the prosecutor's office to move forward. Yeah, so I, I had uh, offered to, to try and connect with the, uh, with the resident, and I did that unsuccessfully. Um, I know there were some issues with our HOA and the same residents um, with compliance in the past. And, you know, my understanding is that there's just a general disagreement on authority and rules and that kind of thing as far as what uh, should and should not happen. Um, the, you know, the structure's post cemented into the ground and, and a deck was built upon which the gazebo was, was placed. And um, you know, I'm happy to support you as our as our zoning inspector and, and person out there doing the work. 
uh, with, with whatever you, you think is uh, necessary to remedy that situation and, you know, up, uphold the integrity of our, of our rules. Um, in this case, I, I, I did dig a lot, as you know, and um, we'll share that I don't think it was a um, something like our last situation that we waived or similar instances where it's a, um, just oversight or, or a general mistake that, that um, you might extend grace towards. I think in this case, there was adequate opportunity to address the situation the right way up front and there was just a general disregard for the effort you were putting in and so you know when that happens you have to unfortunately address it so was there, has there been any response uh he had spoke he had called when i sent a, a certified letter uh he did not sign the certified letter i had had called and spoke and uh, ended up hanging up on me as i tried to explain what the remedy would be for that. Um, he did make a comment that we could come tear it down if we wanted. Stated he was going to get legal involved, but I haven't heard anything since. So, HOA president and uh, one of the officers um, shared shared a similar kind of track record that it's a bit difficult. So, um, I think you've got consent here to. Um, so, so just just for next steps, so we'll work with the prosecutor's office on um, the legal actions that are needed to be uh, taken, and then the, it, this will come back to the board to pass a resolution, a formal resolution. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and thank you, Jeff, for putting the work on this. Not something that's ideal, but uh, unfortunate. Right. And just to add on that a little bit, uh, we'll send it to the prosecutor's office. They typically send a letter and give them a time frame to, to correct the situation, then if they don't correct it that, then we'll deal with it and then we'll bring it to the trustees okay. for more action well thank you thank you i know it's not uh, not not fun part of it you know, <laughs> have to do it, so. all right operations mr bell thanks sir uh first thing i have on the agenda tonight is the uh, parks master plan update we had our initial student community meeting on this past thursday we uh, had eight of our San student community members present uh Brent and carol our consulting firm uh, gave a great overview and brought the steering committee up to speed on where it's going to stand, where it was kind of left off before, and uh, picked that back up and started moving that project forward again. Uh, that discussion led to what our next steps are going to entail, which is to develop our stakeholder committees. Uh, we've, we've designated about 11 stakeholder committees that we're going to start reaching out to through our various channels, through the board, through our uh, social media networks and as well as our OTAC group, uh, they'll be kind of uh, taking on a large role as far as communicating with the public and, and helping fill these rooms uh, for these public meetings that are coming up. I anticipate those uh, taking place here in maybe the next month or so, um, maybe closer to early September, late August, somewhere in there, depending on our uh, consultants' availability. So that would be good. And then uh, at the end of those stakeholder meetings, there will be a community open house to review uh, kind of some of the activities and the different process, processes they go through to develop the entire master plan. And, uh, so that'll be a good, fun next step. I think I mentioned the OTAC involvement with that. I'm looking forward to working with them and keeping them involved in the process project as well. And, uh, so I'll keep uh, the board aware and up to speed on uh, the next steps on that as they become scheduled. We'd love to have your involvement whenever you're available to attend. Uh, it should be a very, uh, very fun process. The North Orange Aquatic Center uh, on the agenda tonight just to provide a mid-season update. Obviously, uh, a lot of legwork went into the planning and the designing of what the post-COVID type pool season will look like. And thankfully, that uh, it was able to be lifted uh, so we can run a fairly normal pool season. Uh, right now, uh, our memberships have kind of leveled off. We're kind of, right now, we're sitting at uh, 2,291 memberships for the year which is substantially higher than we've ever seen uh, looking at the previous uh, numbers that were provided. What, what was the closest to that? A couple thousand? No, That's I'm going to say we were 38 or 3900 okay. in 2019. Off the top of my head, I can pull the number in too. Somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. The primary heads of household looks to be the most previous measurement that has been used in the past. But that highest number we ever saw there was about 1400, 1500, I believe. What we're seeing, the trend is, is 
similar number of primary head of household, kind of primary person on the past, and more family members being able to. So that has led to some uh, very busy days where Mother Nature uh, puts a nice day in front of everybody. The pool is very, very packed. Uh, the adjustments that have been made coming out of COVID have been very positive. Got a lot of great feedback from the members. Also, obviously, some things to work on as well. CPM has been doing a pretty good job and very responsive. And I feel like we're in a very good spot uh, where we are with the pool this the season. As you follow the news or hear from other communities, there's been other issues around town, around Central Ohio, pools needing to close all daily passes, and letter membership with the tenants and staff and problems. If not, uh, had to need to cross that bridge yet, so feel pretty fortunate to be able to keep everything open uh, and, and work with everybody that wants to come to the pool. So I want to update the board on that. We do have three nice swims remaining. Uh, we want the Sorry. One of uh, we have three night swims left, as I was saying. Uh, the next one being this Friday night, we do have, uh, we have uh, put special duty officers on site for those as well as this Friday. I uh, love we'll a DJ as well, try to keep, create a little better atmosphere for the night swims. Uh, CPM again has been very uh, strong to endorse any improvements or any uh, emphasis we want to place on trying to improve the night swims. So again, as long as Mother Nature cooperates, should be a nice event for the community. And the following two night swims will hopefully include some information about the Parks Master Plan update as well. Brand Center Carol might have some flyers and surveys and some of the information to share with people that attend the night swims, which is a great opportunity to uh, outreach with the community. The final piece I have on the operations agenda is a transfer of funds. This request is before you to uh, discuss resurrecting the Bayo Canyon right of way acquisition process. From what I can find in uh, files and records, the last time this was discussed was last July, and the project was tabled at that time. The reason I want to bring it back up is after meeting with our consultants and our vendors that were working on the right of way and the title work and the appraisals on this property in Long Vale Canyon, the timeline for the appraisals that were completed is kind of coming to an end. If the project were to be delayed any further, we would need to restart the project from square one. Picking it back up where it was left off right now, whether the construction phases are imminent or not, the right of way acquisition, they can still utilize the previous data that was collected and all those amenities that were evaluated before to pick the project back up. Uh, the transfer of funds is to uh, cover the additional cost that's necessary to redo some, but not all, of the previous work that was completed. Yeah, our transfer of funds dollar amount. Fifty thousand dollars. The exact amount is forty nine thousand four hundred ninety eight. Is what's going to be needed for the presumption of the process. That's yes, uh, scheduled to come from the contingency model. I don't think we're going to have much of it. We need to move forward. Yeah, you have my my approval. So we need the 50 grand to basically go back and start over? To resurrect where it stands instead of starting over. Okay. It's, yeah, the starting over price, if no action was taken, we would start back from day one. So okay, I just wanted to make sure to clarify. Yes. All right. And this will... That's nope. the resolution for increasing from the yeah. Right. So they're going to go and essentially start buying the right way. Yeah, they'll have to do some additional renegotiations. Just due to property value increase, the appraisal price is from 2019 and 20 to 2021. Sure. So there should be some adjustment in there. There will be a future requisition or uh, discussion coming once we have the final dollar amounts from all the right of acquisitions that are needed. I do not have that number yet. When I have it, I'll bring it before the board for consideration. Understood. Make a motion to approve resolution 21 229, increasing permanent appropriation, establishing resolution 20 401. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. All right. Fire report. Chief McNeil. All right, thanks, sir. Uh, first thing on the agenda is uh, the purchase of our uh, new department renewing vessel. As you're aware, we went and looked at uh, the one uh, the previous meeting that we discussed. And uh, uh, 
part of the piece of boat that took out. It's going to come down and took it out, put out on it, and I think the problem was with the price. They're asking a lot more than both the board. So uh, through the calling and reach out to the company to verify the, the price of anything, we found out that uh, basically a brand new boat was going to cost our approximately $20 a lot more than the 12 year old boat. So uh, before you uh, on the agenda, we have the purchase of the boat for $189,070.45. How did we go from the half million mark down to 189 for the new boat? Sir, it was a uh, smaller size boat. The other one was a uh, smaller size, and then also it did not have a closed cap. The one that they looked at previously had a closed cap. Um, to try to look at uh, if you have uh, heat uh, type injuries or also cold, and if you have the ability to put it in. This does have a cabin, it's just not fully enclosed, right? It it's, has like it's, a, it's a block to block driver, basically. So it's not a cabin, it's just a block. Like a console. Yes, the okay. console. Yeah, I saw that in the picture. So that was the, that's the, the size of it, and also not having a closed cabin. One of the big reasons about that. Um, and also, this pump, um, the fire pump is smaller than the one that was on the other uh, Which we don't plan to have to deal with too many issues there, maybe a boat incident, but not necessarily, unless the restaurant or something kicks off. Exactly, on. sir. Uh, that could be used as uh, anything that's a uh, long brush fire or something, some throw something in a long plate, we could use that. We could also use it for a restaurant, marina. Um, the uh, items down there are not the best in the area that we have, so uh, that would give us the ability to put water on the facility until we resource our new one get back on the construction. But the scaled down version is uh is is feasible for what we need to do out there. Yes. Okay. And I know in the past I mentioned um if and when we move forward with a boat the the opportunity to collaborate with um with the sheriff's department and other entities to make sure that we can branch out and and um I did share the concern over the push to create a new role, if you will, in a dive team and that type of thing. And I think what I heard in meeting with, with you all was that um, there, there's no risk there because currently, um, you know, the dive team and those type of things come from other entities that are already trained. So it's more about getting something on the lake that can uh, can support the recovery operations and that type of thing. That are, it's more about recovery, unfortunately, most times than than rescuing because of the sheer time involved in, in someone drowning. It's, it's so quick. So, I want to point out that that conversation happened and some of the details there for note. And um, I, I'm not opposed here. It's unfortunate that the other boat. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I think there were some good learnings there, and I think with the folks seeing it in person, and even though it was a little smaller, you know, it, it put the reality of, of the prior submittal into clear view that this was a, a substantial enough boat to meet the needs. And the 189 number includes all the bells and whistles that you need, and the spot lock that you talked about. So if you mark a, a, a you know an issue underwater, you don't move from that, and the sonar, all, all of it. Trustee Rivers, your comments or concerns? Uh, for the body of water that this boat's going to be covering, I think uh, it's not the right boat for the right value. It's not, we're not giving up anything as far as what we need to satisfy is safety and for what needs to be handled out on the water. Uh, like the original boat, I'm sure very nice boat, but in the end, I think it had some things that just weren't really necessary for what all we're covering. So I think in the end, we, Happy to hear that we found the best value and found something that uh, makes financial sense and satisfies all of the needs necessary. One more note here: there was a pushback last time because of a, a docking fee that, that um, I think was like a couple thousand a year from the sail club. I, you know, with the trade-off of having our presence and you know what we're offering. And, 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 you know, I've seen our other boat parked over at the store. 
uh, for repair or whatever it's there for. Uh, certainly not that flat bottom to, you know, not sufficient for um, what what's going on. I, I would agree with that after seeing it firsthand. Um, but I am concerned with absorbing any sort of perpetual expense um, with with docking it, you know, with our with our trade off or offset, if you will. So I would I would highly recommend that, um, and I'm happy to step in and, and extend myself to assist with it. I'd like to look at negotiating with, you know, whether it's the ODNR or whomever that has dock facilities down there, um, Seal Club, Allen Creek Marina. I, I think with with what we're offering and what we're setting out to do, um, it's a it's a sheer benefit to everybody, and. Um, it would be difficult for me to prove, you know, expenses as a result of that. I understand that businesses to run, but I'm very familiar with marinas and there's, you know, a lot of flexibility in what we could do and uh, want to encourage, you know, that partnership and um, avoiding that. Okay. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-230, authorizing the issuance of a purchase order to Lake Assault Boats. Uh, and the amount of $489,072.45 for the purchase of a new fire department marine vessel. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. So I think it's ideal. It's what you want. You bring people in part time and have them earn their position as a full time firefighter. And if we have opportunities, and if we don't do that, then I think it's a further further risk to a part time program that's already tough as it is. So I'm, I'm fine with this. Trustee Rivers, we're doing. Make a motion to approve resolution uh, 21-231, accepting the resignation of part-time firefighter paramedic Christopher Warren. Second. Mr. Grumbles. Yes. Mr. Rivers. Yes. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-232, appointment to position of full-time firefighter paramedic for Christopher Warren. Second. Mr. Grumbles. Yes. Mr. Rivers. Yes. Please extend the congratulations to him and thanks for his uh, time investment in our community. Thank you. All right, Ms. Kraft. All right. Um, so it looks like I have a lot of the stuff here on the agenda. Let's just start with the, um, we'll hit the June financial report real quick. Uh, the reports, I think you both, I don't know if you both signed them or not, but they're back in uh, Leanne's office. But a few highlights as of June 30th, our ending cash balance is $26,062,731.25. Uh, which in includes about 19 million in investment still. Um, as far as fund or uh, department cash balances, our general fund is at 6.6 .6 million, roads is at 4.2, fire at 7.4, and parks at 5.5 million. Our expenses through June 30th are 6.5 million, and our revenue through, uh, through June 30th is 8.2 million. Okay, uh, moving on next to the um, records request. We want to pull up the, the um, flow chart that Michelle so kindly put together. Um, so in general, what we needed to do, um, especially from an audit standpoint, we needed to formalize the, uh, the records uh, request, you know, records process as far as when we receive a records request. And the big takeaway from this is we really want everything to funnel through the records request um, at orangetwp.org email address. That way um, it can be logged, it can be tracked for timely response, and uh, we have, you know, a, a clear audit trail for when we get audited. Um, so, I, I, hopefully you all looked at it in the back of It's kind of hard to see there because I don't have glasses on. But uh, we would, you know, if this is, if everybody's okay with this records uh, 
process, uh, then what we would do is roll this out to the rest of the team so that if Chief McNeil were to get a records request, then he would understand that he needs to forward that to records request at orangetwp.org, and that email address would respond that we are in receipt of the request and would track that information accordingly. So um, are there any questions or concerns with uh, as the process is laid out? No, I think that was the intent of the email address, was to centralize everything into one spot so that it was easier to keep track of. So this is currently going to the administrator, though, correct? No, so so the records request um, is Val Bunting and Lisa Kraft as the backup. Right, but we had, as far as what we have for our resolution, the respondent is the, the administrator. Yes, it is. You're right. Yes, you, yes, it is. But we changed that. In so the I prior can meeting. look. So yeah. would the board consider um, amending that? Um, to I have thought we did take consent on on moving that to. Temporarily, or what have you. I know that it was discussed at least that, that Val at the meeting would um, would serve as the point. And if we didn't pass resolution, that's fine. We can. Um, we named um, Val Bunting as designee of board, uh, board of Township Trustees for Public Records Training. I'd have to go back and read Resolution Twenty One Dash Two Nineteen. It's still the administrator. We did that. We did that last year, but the what I was recalling was that you were going to go through the uh, training, and then when we discussed that, we were talking about this future, sorry this future state process where you would serve as the point person. So it still should technically be. I see them all, yes, and then I believe the administrator was changed in twenty eighteen. I believe. Okay. Yeah, it was taken away from when it was between, I think, Lee to, to, to Ryan's point, when uh, Mr. Bodnar and Mr. Spitzer were here. Right. So. And, then, uh, and then when um, Mr. Bodnar separated, we made, um, we made a change, I believe, for that, just to name the person, um, because the resolution named the person instead of the title. Okay. So we can clean all of that up once... Uh, once the process is ready and approved and we're ready to go and get the resolution that we need to fix, maybe the next meeting we can put that on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, in general, and we didn't um, uh, we didn't address kind of what happens if it needs to go to legal. Um, our first, um, you know, uh, kind of drop off with legal would probably be the prosecutor's office as long as there wasn't a conflict there. So, but we didn't identify that because we, we hope that, you know, we don't need to involve legal and, and you know, many of our requests. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Well, then um, what I'm hearing is, in general, we're okay with it, but it doesn't match, uh, to Mr. Rivers' point, doesn't match our resolution. So we will um, kind of marry all this together for the next meeting with a, a resolution um, appointing the office manager to manage that inbox and then be the, you know, be the respondent. Who's making the decision right now for legal? If we get records requests, it goes to outside counsel, it goes to the prosecutor's office. Who's making that call? It's, it depends on the request. If it comes across my office, I'll make that call. Um, and I think Michelle, if she's not comfortable with something, has has been doing the same. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't know if it's necessarily consistent in our approach. It's, it's, if that's something the board is interested in, we can definitely try to clear that out I would um, like to get that clarified just for just for consistency standpoint sure so when we go at this I think we last time when we cleaned up the resolution I think we moved it to the title because it wasn't the title before it just was previously the name the actual person then we moved it to when we revised it last year we moved it to the position so that we wouldn't have to go back and change it every time and so if we want to change it, then I would recommend that we change it by position as opposed to name. And then um, if we have an, a process or like a litmus for legal review, then, um, you know, it's, it's going to be discretionary to some extent, but we should build it into this flow chart as well. So it's consistent and um, and publicized. And we can so look at... it's actually need to expenses. Yeah, know. and Val and I can look at recent or 
past uh, public records requests and see how we've handled it and if we can kind of gauge, you know, this has been going to the prosecutors or or we can also take the approach every time we go to the prosecutors first and then if it doesn't seem ideal, then we can kick it to our private counsel. I, I don't, I'm, I'm having a, and this, you know, maybe we can talk this out further too, but... Um, I mean, I think I, if it's... There's inherently obviously. always going to be some level of gray, yes. you know, kind of in here. So um, you can't plan for every, a process doesn't plan for every scenario um, as much as we would love it to. Um, so I think that's kind of where we do have to give a little bit of discretion and what, whoever we give that to, do we give that discretion to the administrator or to the person who is responding? I would say the administrator because, uh, my preference anyway, I mean, what you said, Michelle, is exactly what's been done in the past. They'll look through, and that's why we keep a records log. You can see in the records log if somebody's requested similar or the same, you can pull up their request. If it's consistent, get the record. If there's, you know, litigation risk, you may copy in our counsel as a for awareness, but that shouldn't change the merit of the request. And then I think if there's um, anything else that you're unfamiliar with or verbiage that you've not seen or you're comfortable with, you can always ask for an opinion from the prosecutor. 99.9% .9 of the time, what Chris Betts says is, get the records. You can, you can understand what they're asking for, then just produce. And that's what his response has been that I've seen almost every time. And Brian Zetz has been pretty consistent this year, too, with that. I know in the past they've objected going back four years of requests that I've looked at, the relational words and stuff like that. Um, and then um, what ended up happening is a lot of uh, uh, several cases went to the uh, Court of Claims here in Delaware County. And as Brian Zetz has explained, the judge presiding over that, I believe, is judge. There was one case that went to, uh, what's that? I can't remember the judge's name. They're going to say the same thing as Chris Betts, and that's why Chris Betts says it. So Brian Zetz has even modified most times what his feedback is based on what you might have seen four years ago because of precedent with the court and understanding it's just a waste of money and time. But again, I think there's merit in having them copied or aware at times, just especially if it's leaning towards litigation or related to existing standing litigation, then um, I would just as a best practice keep them involved. So that would be just a yes, a binary on here. Is this part of, you know, known part of litigation? Yes. Forward for awareness, you don't ask for incurring an expense. And if not, you know, you don't need to. That makes sense. Like, like for example, the ones that came over that were related to zoning, you sent those to Pete Griggs for awareness. Mm -hmm. If they're related to other matters, you sent it to the proper uh, attorney handling network. Mm -hmm. We could build that in, it'd be fine. Are you, for, are you okay yeah, with that? For, for now, I think what we have is the administrator. I think the administrators call uh, the majority of our public records. The prosecutor's office can handle, I would agree. Um, for outside counsel, I think the prosecutor's office sometimes can do, um, you know, have a lot in their plate. And for, for time, I said time, I think sometimes we do need outside counsel or things that are more complicated, I guess, or different situations arise. Uh, I would like to see us move forward and uh, look at having Pete Griggs handle you know, public records. I think he's done a wonderful job for us. Um, he's a 20 years experience in townships. So I've, I've talked to him about this. Uh, I'd like to have him considered to be our outside counsel going forward, but I'm happy to um, discuss all this so we can bring it forward at our, at our next meeting. Okay. That, no objections, Tim. Okay. Been done a good job. And just one last note. I scribbled this, but our newest staff, Jess Hewitt, uh, was the one who put this in Vizio. So thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your Jess. help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next on the uh, agenda is the audit. Um, there is a request from the auditor based on um, uh, the uh, the trustee uh, forms or what, uh, where trustees provide a comment as well as um, the auditor of state requesting some 
uh, modifications to the agreement. One modification was to remove the federal um, uh, the requirement for single audit since we didn't spend 750,000 of the CARES money last year. We didn't need the single audit so that lowered the cost some and then um, adding these additional uh, reviews. When I went back and looked at the resolution that was originally passed that uh, when the board gave me permission to execute the documents, it didn't give me permission, permission to execute modifications. So this is just um, allowing me to electronic, and, and the, all the modifications are electronic through the Auditor of State, so I have to do it all um, online. So this is asking for uh, the board's okay to move forward with that. No concern. All right, I'm gonna read through that one then. Res make a motion to approve resolution 21-233, execute modification request from the Auditor of State and Julian and Groove, is that right? Uh, for this, for the 2019 and 2020 audit of financial statements. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Okay, next, um, the next two are um, requests to obtain cards. One is BP cards for maintenance worker James Hobbs and fire chief uh, Nathan McNeil. And the other is obtaining um, or adding Mike Kelly to the Home Depot account, uh, getting him a Home Depot credit card. I have no objection right now, but I do want to point out that um, the, the premise behind the role we created, um, I believe earlier this year or late last year, and um, and bringing in Dude Solutions last year was to centralize procurement. So it's not going to help much with a gas card, but from the stance of Home Depot and other uh, purchases, um, did meet with Miss um, Bonnie this week to kind of clarify and catch up on a few things that were still in progress on the two roles, uh, Miss Bunting's role and Miss um, Lewis's role um, that were in progress last year and making sure that uh, we dial in there and, and continue to proceed. And I uh, know that um, we met with uh, Duke Solutions as well um, and, and discussed uh, their, their offering and what they're capable of. And I know there's a lot of work uh, going on behind the scenes there. So once that happens um, and that, and that, uh, that goal is, is realized, it will... Um, clean up our, our purchasing <clears throat> and streamline that so we have you know a pretty centralized audit system if you will any questions any sign-offs or approvals for POs would be centralized and do solutions that allow um, quick research valuing what our assets are what we've spent on each one and that was why uh, there was a need to inventory all of our assets and things like that so it's good that that's on track and, and um, getting caught up. And so um, no, no problem now, but at some point in the future, I do want to share the goal being that the, the purchasing cards are limited to Miss Lewis and, and her capacity as central procurement and, and coordinated through Duke Solutions when high ticket items are needed. Um, this is a longer process and, and will be phased in. I know there were some concerns, but. Um, just point re reiterating that. I know we talked a lot last year about that. So. Make a motion to approve resolution 21 234 authorizing the fiscal office to obtain a vehicle card to BP for maintenance worker James Hobbs and fire chief Nathan McNeil. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Make a motion to approve resolution 21 235 authorizing the fiscal office to obtain a credit card at Home Depot, Parks and Facilities Manager Mike. Triggered. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, now um, the American Rescue Plan. So there's two resolutions that are tied together on this one. Um, and just a little background on this. Um, we have to do a resolution. Uh, the first resolution is to apply for funds, and that uh, is an online process. And um, I need to name a grant contact as well as an authorized representative um, for this grant. And I think uh, you both have probably seen the email 
Total funds are a little over $3 million for the township, broken uh, apart into $1.5 million uh, each for the next, this year and next. Once um, I do the paperwork online, they said they're running about 10 days uh, until we get receipt of funds, so that should give us enough time to set up the new fund that we have to have in our accounting system to manage and separate that money. Um, so that's the second resolution you see. Um, a few other things on, on um, these American Rescue Plan funds. I do have to, if, we, if the township wants to move forward with this, I do have to have the online application process completed by September 4th, which will include um, a signature on award terms and conditions by the authorized representative, as well as signed, um, signed assurances of compliance with Title um, VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So I have both those documents here for signature tonight. I need both of those signed before I can um, do the online application process. Uh, we will also need a process to describe how the funds will be distributed. Um, for example, we're going to follow the procurement process, approve the PO, et cetera. So more to follow there. The uh, OBM is going to be giving some seminars on that uh, over the next month, and I'll be sure to attend one of those. And then we also have to follow the Treasury procurement process. So um, you have to follow whichever process is more stringent, either the, at your level of government, which is township, obviously, or at the treasury level. And my guess is the treasury level is a lot more stringent. So we will have to follow their procurement processes. Um, and um, I would recommend that uh, Silas or um, Bonnie, or Miss Bonnie attend. Um, they're going to be having presentations, webinars on the procurement process and how that needs to be laid out. So when I get that information, I'll be sure to forward it along. Um, so, uh, and my role in this is simply just to um, apply online and then I'll have to do quarterly reporting similar to what I do for the CARES Act. And I'm not sure who the board would like to appoint to kind of be the point person on use of funds, how, you know, running through legal to make sure that the use is appropriate because these funds are very different from CARES. These funds are for infrastructure. And we have until either 2025 or 2026, I don't remember off the top of my head, to use this money. So this isn't something that we have to use all this money in a, in a month. So Roads, utilities, things like infrastructure. that. Infrastructure, yep. Any questions on that? I know I put a good lot <laughs> a lot out there. No, so. We just got the right of way for the opening in. Stuff could use. Okay, so that's what the next two resolutions are, is to authorize me to go get the funds, and then um, secondly, to establish the new fund within UAN to separate the monies when received. And as a point person, I think ideally it would be like the administrator or something, or, or, I mean, it can't be you, right? No, I, I, can be the con I, can be a con I can be the contact for reporting and things like that, but the authorized representative cannot be the same as the contact. Suggest administrator. Then. You're not very busy these days, are you, Michelle? <laughs> oh my well, for, fortunately, with the American Rescue Plan, is that we don't have to identify exactly what we want to use at this time. So that's exactly. what we were kind of frantically trying to figure out during all this. So you know, we do have a few years to um, to put some good plans. Happy to make Silas the, the operations director as well. Since it's infrastructure related. I mean, it might make more sense to just. You're okay with that? You want to flip for it? <laughs> oh, I was going to. Well, why, don't, why don't I recommend maybe the next meeting we can yeah, have a discussion fine. around kind of how, because hopefully, because maybe by then we'll have the money, and then we can start to have a discussion about who's going to kind of be point on figuring out how that so money will We don't need sense. a point person to sign these documents. We do need a point person to sign these documents, but yeah. Okay. That's why I was trying to. Is that, that. what you're. Okay. Then I do need a point person. Um, I don't, it needs to be administrator or trustee. Okay, so okay. there, that narrows it down. Could have saved me the special. Michelle, you win. <laughs> Michelle wins, there you right. go. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Which so. Which resolution has to um, be? Uh, first, we need to do the resolution to register Orange Township to receive its share of American Resource or Rescue Plan. That's where we name the point person. Um, yes, I think it is in here. Let me see if he's, uh, no, it's not in here. It just says that we'll do the registration, so. All right, I'll just speak to it then. That's fine. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-236. Second. 
to register Orange Township to receive its share of American Rescue Plan Act funds from the Ohio Office of Budget and Management, naming Michelle Bonney and or our acting administrator as the point of contact. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-237, establishment of new fund. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. All right. I believe that brings us to your report. Ms. Bonnie is administrator. So, Michelle, before you get into the first item, for our, our appointment process or protocol we've always used for OTOC, it was gather all the resumes for possible candidates, send it out to the board, um, board to have the opportunity to contact be a part of the appointment process over time. Some board members have been engaged, some have not, just you know, uh, at their discretion. So as far as the appointments, I hadn't received any resumes or any information. I think it was in the second backup that was sent here this afternoon. So as far as appointments, I would just like to table that till the next meeting. I'd like to have an opportunity to review the information. That's okay. It, yes, and that's at that time with me, and I, I apologize if that's not oh, no, no, that's, no, earlier. No, I, um, but it's directly to you. I just, you know. And just just for the just for the record, the two resumes that were part of the backup items this evening were, were are the only two. But we'll. Okay, that's fine. If you have any comments on that, let me know. That's fine. Table two. Um, okay. I, I think um, we have openings. We may want to post that, like we've done in the past. I think they they were posted. It, it, it is posted. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. But Nancy can, or Jess probably can confirm or that. The will talk board member. It's posted on our website. Correct. Um, I know it has been. Sure. I don't know if this specific time has been okay. when, because um, I know we just had the resignation, maybe a meet, two meetings ago. Yes, so and we and we reached when we had our OTOP meeting, not this past one, but the one before. We did um, suggest that they reach out to their their neighbors and the people they know to apply. And so I that's, think that's where they generated. So yes. let's be consistent. Okay. Post, if I think that's so not not a big deal at all. Just okay. Give one more time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I would like to give an OTOC update. Um, I probably I will have Silas take the lead on this, but we did have a meeting with the board uh, last week, and, and myself, Lisa, and Silas were involved. And um, Silas, do you want to give a brief update on that? Absolutely. Uh, we discussed some of the night swims that are coming up, uh, a brief touch on the Parks Master Planning Committee, because OTOC preceded the Parks Master Planning Committee. There wasn't a whole lot of updates at that point in time. We also discussed the upcoming movie in the park night, which will be August 28th. We will talk to be assisting with that, and then we uh, began discussions on the holiday event. The date on that uh, in December. Show if you have that handy on there. First Sunday in December. December 5th. Uh, so, initially we'll be working uh, more on the, uh, sorry, more on the movie to park and then we will uh, transition next week into the holiday event. Do we need the board to approve the December 5th holiday event? Okay. Uh, we'll and then the movie in the park, I think we already talked about once, right? I believe that was approved at the last meeting. Right. So we'll get the dates and everything out, communicated. And I know, too, at the OTOC meeting, I came in towards the end, but <clears throat> they, there was discussion. I met with the brand setter gentleman, reached out with the Parks Master Plan um, to meet with each of the board members, and we spoke about the option of utilizing. Um, Say follow up with, with you all about uh, utilizing the pool and those events as well to market the master plan, but just to keep everybody um, uh, informed in the community. So not only with the master plan, but marketing, um, you know, the next event or what's going on in the township. So any resources or handhelds, um, you know, chief, if there's something with the fire department, uh, and then we're going to talk about the levy, you know, it, it, those are times that. It, 
even without events, just the pull traffic in general, the uptick in resident usage. And since you know the majority of people there should be residents, um, utilizing the front desk area or a um, informational kind of A-frame, cardboard, whatever, with, with some brochures or postings, um, just a just a notice notification, you know, type type system. Especially as we get towards the end of the season, people are going to want to get in and get their swim. Um, not losing that opportunity to communicate with them. Um, we also talked about maybe putting a computer, or some sort of paper surveys or something, just since there's traffic, you know, taking advantage of it. I know you mentioned the the, the, the room during the uh, night swims, mm -hmm. opening that up for resident interaction. All things would be helpful. So a really good uh, meeting and enjoyed listening to the last bit. Maybe even like a tablet or something too. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, just just opportunities. He took the notes and said he coordinate with you all. But um, <clears throat> when we get the residents like that, you know, and they're at an event, they start thinking of what could be better, and you know, they're more willing to get feedback. I think. Yeah, I think one of the big pushes for Brand Center and Carol currently, uh, as we build the stakeholder groups and kind of gather feedback as much as we can in the short window of time we have is to really push the survey that's out there as well as pushing the mind mixer site that was created in the past. Uh, I'm not as familiar with all the details of the mind mixer site, but he, he alluded to a big push at some point where there was several hundred responses in a, in a little one week period that tailed off again. Uh, so we discussed probably similar years of the conversation was trying to find a way to gather as much feedback as we can through those two avenues while it's available through the next one. So I'm going to have the Okay, I'm open to all that. So then are we, uh, just for the, the journal here, did we, are we pushing, confirming the holiday event date or are you guys confirming tonight with consensus to hold the event on December 5th? I'll give it my consent. Yeah. Okay, no issue. got it, thank you. It's nice to have it back. Right, Michelle, with the EMS? Yes. Um, so EMS uh, reached out to us, and they're just here to simply renew their lease um, at uh, 6226 3rd Street. Um, nothing has changed regarding the lease, and just a renewal. Concerns, anything? Big most group resolution 21 238. Enter into lease agreement with the Board of County Commissioners of Delaware County, Ohio, for use by Delaware County Emergency Services of a portion of the township's facilities located at 6226 3rd Street property. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Um, the next item on the agenda is discussion on the shredded event. So we had one, to my knowledge, I think it was a couple years ago. Um, and I'd like to see if the board would wish to reconsider that. Um, I'm sure as you walk around this office, you are aware that we're trying to do some major organization. Um, as you have following this, we'll be discussing the obsolete items, but we do have a lot of papers that we um, that are not considered record uh, that we can purge. Uh, of course, we'll make a list of all those papers and send it to the Ohio Historic um, Society Commission. Mm -hmm. um, and then they need two weeks to review it. Um, prior to us uh, disposing of those papers. Um, so Patty has helped me put some, this service agreement together and just give a quote. So um, the minimum charge would be $200. And my question is, um, if we do have this event, do we want to open up to the public like we've done in the past? Um, in the past, we did it to, to the residents, uh, not for the businesses. And if so, um, if that is the case, I'd like to aim for maybe an end of August timeline um, as it'll take us time to gather all the papers we want to be able to dispose of and um, you know, publicize it to the, the, the community. Um, the last thing on that, I'd like to look into this at a further time. I'd like to look into doing a disposal of electronics. Um, that's a little more complicated, um, or I don't want to say complex, um, to get through. So we're looking to see what the county's done in the past on that. But for now, we can at least dispose of papers. As long as our legal counsel doesn't have concerns with us opening it up or absorbing liability with the people coming and bringing documents or whatever, however they want to advise us, I think I'm fine with that. No 
objection. Okay. I'm I, just trying to remember that the last time we had it. I think it was. We had, I think, quite a number of volunteers. Is that something I should, do you know, OTOC. was it was it more of an OTOC no, capacity? No, it was most of the fire department. Where we had a kind of chief global and okay. all the folks involved. We didn't, I mean, we didn't have, it was mostly staff, it wasn't you know, many volunteers. Because mm -hmm. I mean, that's not, you know, shredding sure anything. Well, it was pretty popular from a volunteer standpoint, that it's, it's a big draw. I mean, we could push it back to even September timeline if we want to help see if OTA can help us gather volunteers, or you know, we could, the chief and I can see what the fire department did with it in the past. But I think the last event was maybe 2017, 18. Yeah, just 2018. So. Yeah, I just can't remember off the top of my head. And it, and it, and you are right; it was a popular event. So you know. I it's, think we were there for a couple of hours, and if we had. It brought out all kinds of interesting drop-offs, but I just remember that we had, it required quite a bit of, of uh, getting power and all hands on deck. So, it's just, just to keep in mind, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm fine with having the event, but I just, as far as what we had there, as far as people and individuals helping, the numbers I think. Do you know, or, Trustee Rivers, do you, do you recall if we, um, because there's two different options. They can shred it on site, which would be a bigger cost, or they can take it and then shred it off site. Do you remember what we did then? I don't think we did any on site, no. Okay. I could be wrong, but just remember, I don't think there was anything on site. I just, it was, um, I believe we had electronic drop off as well. But yeah, I mean, you just had all kinds of stuff being, being dumped. Yeah. Um, and it did, it, it has good traffic. Electronics have always been a home depot. You get in the parking lot there and they have to drive through. But I, I don't think it matters if, it, if they take it with them and shred it as long as they, can, they put them in the bins that are locked and mm -hmm. then they take them away. You may want to work with them to if it's that popular and you can get good overlap. Maybe some people stick it down and spill something out of it. Our next OTOC meeting is September. Is that? We did it. We did it in 2018. Oh, 2019. Okay. Electronics. Oh, for electronics. Okay. Yeah, 20 I just, they had I'm 20 like, volunteers just according to this recap. We had 20 volunteers just for the, the electronic mm -hmm. cycle event. Just from a time stick, because once you get into September, fall weekends obviously are pretty cool. Um, so I, I, I mean, I'm fine with having the event or having something. I just don't know. It's just a bigger un undertaking, yeah. It's a big, yeah, it's, you're going to take on a lot. And just looking at the calendar, I think um, the window is quickly shrinking. Window folder. I mean, I'm fine with whatever the group decides with, but just trying to forewarn of what all you're taking on here. And mm -hmm. It's not a small, small job. Yeah, I, and I appreciate the board's insight. I think at this point in time, I might want to remove it off the agenda and, and work with OTOC prior to revisiting this because I, I cannot pull 20 volunteers on my own, unfortunately. So um, I think it's a great event. I think it's it's a popular one. So I, I want to do it right. All right. Any um, the next item on the agenda is regarding the Sedgwick Group Reading Plan. Um, this is in regards to our workers' comp. Um, this is pretty standard as um, we we use uh, Sedgwick is uh, also with it, Ohio Township Association. There's not too many details on this. Um, we just if you want to add anything to that but no I mean just what Michelle said this is we've done uh, from what I could tell um, we've always done these group rating plans which is better from a rate standpoint you spend $180,000 uh, that check we write in December um, so we are using the Ohio you know, Township Association has a group um, uh, a group rating program and we're part of that and all this is is ex um, we just need to uh, you need to identify who you'd like to execute the contract. It needs to be uh, executed by the end of this month. Let me put 
to move. No, there's a blank in there, right there, on who, uh, on the name to insert there. Michelle, are you okay signing the contract? Yes. Right. Any concerns? Yes. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-239, authorizing execution of group retrospective rating program service agreement with Sedgwick Claims Management <laughs> Services Incorporated. For services as consultants to the Ohio Township Association, Ohio Workers' Compensation Group retrospective rating program, be it further resolved that Michelle Bonney uh, shall execute such contract on behalf of the board. Thank you. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. And the last item I have under administrative report um, is in regards to obsolete items. So that's the team and I have been um, walking <laughs> walking around the township hall and trying to determine uh, what can be uh, for disposal and what can be put up for op auction. Um, so I think we'll have a couple more rounds of lists to come, but I think this is a good um, amount to start with. Um, so if the board has any questions, the backup items included images of all the items. Um, we have a lot of stuff located in places that it's this is a long time coming <laughs> so i just there were some of that i did look through i just did, i was impressed with how much stuff you found um, instead of throwing things away i'd like to, to find out legally what you know what what we can do to donate to different organizations habitat for humanity and things like that um, also, like the the Ryobi uh, pole saw and things like, there's value in those. I know we could sell or, or give to those groups um, to auction off. If we're not interested in auctioning them off, they will. Um, you know, it's a it, I have a similar setup. So the, the, the pole saw extension works at, even if the engine doesn't. So it's over hundred eleven dollars. So you know, if they can get value out of it, if it's a uh, uh, obsolete for our use. I just want to ensure that we go through and vet our county partners and and um, charitable organizations in the area, make sure that there's nothing there from a trash standpoint that they can utilize and benefit from simply because we won't. Does that make sense? I know, I know especially the chairs and things, they use those to, um, charitable organizations, we use those to help startups and different you know, different different nonprofit type health groups and things, they always have a need for that. Other than that, I'm fine with getting rid of it, just the means of how we do it. Do you want to table this until we, do you want to vet, vet it and see if there's any organizations that we can be specific, or you want me to revise what I read? I, I think the biggest issue is just the compliance side of giving, selling or giving things away. It's just, unfortunately, it's all the government, it's always complicated, right? You think it'd be very simple and just donate things. It never is. Um, so I mean, I'm, if we have some things that we can you know, donate, um, I'm all for it. But I'm guessing the majority of the stuff we probably take obsolete and just nothing we can. Yeah, I mean, I, we can. I, I, we can table this, and then you know, we can send this list out to see what is even something you know that we we can donate. I, I know from Pat, from my experience. When I tried to donate things to certain entities, there was some some strange line that you know I wasn't able to do it to one because I didn't do it to the other. You know. So if you make it trash, so then you just. But I'll get. I can get clarity on that. So you know, I can. We could send this to the prosecutor's office and you know see if we're you know. So let's let's do the resolution and we'll just add uh, pending direction items will be classified pending direction of the prosecutor's office. Is that fair? Fair Were you so, adding that uh, in the resolution? I'm going to read it at the end. Okay. And I'm sorry, Trustee Grumble. So if so, pending. So if if the if our legal counsel says we can donate items, where I'm able to move forward with that. And then I, I would just say to take the disposal or auction off of the category, and just find you know because there's different things on here, and just say that they're that we're saying that they're obsolete and unfit for use. They have no value, so we're either going to discard it or salvage based on the discretion of the of the staff and cooperation with the prosecutor's office. Based on advice of the prosecutor's office, that makes sense? Okay. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-240, 
finding certain personal property not needed for public use, obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired, to have no value, and ordering it to be discarded or salvaged, pending the discretion of the township administrator per the advice received from the county prosecutor's office. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. Last thing I think is the fire levy. <laughs> just to be safe. Yeah. Um, sorry, it was just uh, we had sent um, Mr. Betts uh, um, uh, a text to see if you have to read the whole um, resolution in its entirety, and I'm going to say for um, to be safe, I would say yes. So um, just a little bit on the tax levy um, that's before you. As a board, we discussed this um, a few times this year. Um, if we look at past practice, the, tax, uh, the fire levy was put on last um, November 6, 2018, and the Parks and Rec and Road and Bridge levies were uh, voted on on November 5, uh, 2019. My guess is this was done so that uh, voters aren't looking at 8.5 mils in taxes all at once. Um, as far as separating them because they all begin the same tax year and in the same tax year. So um, after talking to the prosecutor's office and the pro prosecutor's office, the board of elections and the county auditor's office, um, there's kind of this is a three step process. The first will be the resolution of necessity, which is in front of you. Um, once that's passed by the board, I'll send it to the Delaware County auditor and then they will send the uh, certification of funds. And then um, uh, Mr. Betts has already sent me the resolution of necessity for me to revise once I receive those funds. And uh, so we'll take that certificate, complete the res or, I'm sorry, the resolution to proceed. Um, I'll complete the resolution to proceed, and then we'll need a special meeting for this resolution here towards you know Thursday or Friday of this week. Um, and then once that is approved, then I'll uh, meet with Carla at the Board of Elections. Um, probably Monday of next week to drop off all our paperwork and make sure everything's in order. So that uh, that will be in front of the August 4th deadline. Are there any questions? And this is just renewal, right? It's just a renewal at 7.0 mils uh, for three years. The, the, the and this, um, this levy has been on since levy year started in 2013. It does qualify for rollbacks. I was going to say it's important to note that we're getting a kickback from the from the state. I believe on on this levy, number one, number two, it's proven sufficient, and you know it makes makes more sense in my mind to to lock that in than to pull out a calculator and, and be wrong, if we will. Um, I think we have some things coming in the pipeline that may require a little money. Um, it might offer some some incentive to reconsider uh, millage in the next three year period, but I want the residents to know with this as well. The dollar amount is, it says it's seven mils, but the by rolling it forward um, as opposed to starting a fresh levy, the the effective millage is going to be a lot lower than that for each resident. So. Um, it's a dollar amount that, that was approved back in 2013. Whatever seven mils was at that time, that's the same dollar amount that will serve by this time. And so what that means for each individual taxpayer is far less than what it meant in 2013. And uh, as the township has grown, they've distributed that seven mils out. Each iteration of the, the, the auditor's gone out and, and we've had commercial come in, et cetera. So it's a benefit to everyone. Uh, you know, when we look at, at levies like this, if we're able to continue to get that kickback from the state and benefit from that effective millage, you know, if we reset it at a, at a millage, say six mills, you might think it's lower um, in actuality when they reset that millage and we don't get a kickback, we could in fact be charging residents more. So whatever the auditor state or the uh, county auditor's website shows is our effective millage, which would be less than seven, that's what we should we should know, and each year will continue to go down. So this needs to be done Thursday or Friday, if possible. If not, versus next week. Uh, 
do. I mean, it works, it's just a simple resolution, right? Yep. Yeah. I can squeeze it Friday afternoon. It's just a matter of coming in and put the resolution layup and we're out. Okay. All right. Um, well, then I'll have uh, ask Mrs. Uh, Ms. Bonnie to. Uh, coordinate a time unless we want to set one right now. I can set it. We can set yeah, it. I, okay. I'm not flexible for any every time this comment is. You want to do like a three o'clock? Or, um, or one? Yeah. About 1245. I need to read this whole resolution then. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to approve resolution 21 241, resolution of necessity to levy a renewal tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation for the purpose of providing fire and EMS services. The Board of Trustees of Orange Township, Delaware County, Ohio, met in regular session on July 19, 2021, with the following members present. Ben Grumbles, Chair, Ryan Rivers, Trustee. Scrumbles move the adoption of the following resolution, whereas the amount of taxes that will be raised within the 10 mil limitation will be insufficient to provide for the necessary requirements of Orange Township, Delaware County, Ohio, and whereas it's necessary to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation, and whereas the levy would be for the purpose of providing and maintaining fire apparatus, appliances, buildings, or sites, therefore, or sources of water supply and materials, therefore, or the establishment maintenance of lines, the fire alarm telegraph, or the payment of firefighting companies or current part-time or volunteer firefighting emergency medical service administrative or communications personnel to operate the same including the payment of any employer contributions required for such personnel under section 145.48 or 742.34 of the Ohio revised code for the purpose of ambulance equipment or the provision of ambulance paramedic or other emergency medical services operate operated by a fire department or firefighting company said purposes being authorized I revise code section 5705.19 section I and whereas a resolution declaring the necessity of levying a renewal tax pursuant to revised code section 5705.19 subsection I outside the 10 mil limitation must be approved and certified to the Delaware County Auditor in order to permit the board to consider the levy of such a tax and must request that the auditor certify to the board the total current tax valuation of the township and the number of mills required to generate a specified amount of revenue or the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by a specified number of mills. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the board at least two thirds of all of the members of the board concurring as follows. The amount of taxes will be raised within the 10 mill limitation will be insufficient to provide for the necessary requirements of the township that is necessary to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mill limitation pursuant to revised code Section 5075.03, subsection B. One, the purpose of the tax is as follows. Providing and maintaining fire apparatus, appliances, buildings, and sites. Therefore, sources of water supply and materials, therefore, or the establishment and maintenance of lines, the fire alarm telegraph, or the payment of fire fighting companies, or permanent part time or volunteer firefighting emergency medical uh, service, administrative or communications personnel to operate the same, including the payment of any employer contributions required for such personnel. Under section 145.48 or 742.34 of the Vice Code, for the purchase of ambulance equipment or the provision of ambulance, paramedic, or other emergency medical services operated by a fire department or firefighting company. The type of levy is as follows renewal levy at the current levy rate of seven mills, total proposed levy rate of seven mills. Sections of the revised code authorizing submission of the question of the tax are revised code section 5075.03, 5075.191, and 5075.25, and the following revised code section 5705.19, subsection I. The term of the tax is as follows three years. The territory where the tax is levied is as follows uh, upon the entire territory of the township. The date of the election at which the question of the tax will appear on the ballot is as follows, November 2nd, 2021, the territory where the ballot measure is to be submitted is as follows, upon the entire territory of the township. The tax will be first levied and collected is as follows. The tax year in which the tax will first be levied is 2022. The calendar year in which the tax will first be collected is 2023. 
Township has territory in Delaware County and each of the following listed counties. None. Pursuant to revised code section 5705.03 subsection B1, the fiscal officer is hereby directed to certify a copy of this resolution to the auditor. The board hereby requests that the auditor certify in this board the following total current tax valuation of the township, number of mills required to generate the following amount of revenue, or the dollar amount of revenue that would be generated by the levy of the following seven mills. All formal actions of this board concerning and relating to the passage of this resolution were adopted in an open meeting of the board and all deliberations of this board and of any of its committees that resulted in such formal action were in meetings open to the public in compliance with all legal requirements, including revised code section 121.22. This resolution shall be in full force and effect immediately by adoption. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? Yes. And I'd like to thank for all of our staff here except Michelle. Um, back in the day, we used to read every word of every <laughs> resolution. So that was before that. So I, I can I can say to say for everyone, don't miss those days. <laughs> I can't even imagine. You did a good job reading it then. Any other business before the board today? Right. I just need two signatures before you both leave. Okay. Make a motion to approve resolution 21-242, meeting adjournment. Second. Mr. Grumbles? Yes. Mr. Rivers? All right. Meeting adjourned.